innards of an ice cream maker laying out here, and then like, that's kind of put together. So we do know that, um, you know, there was cooking that happened down there. Um, may, would there have been something out back? Was there a summer kitchen? We're not sure. Initially, they uh, weren't from Racine. He came from Westminster, Massachusetts, he and his family. When he was still pretty young, his dad um, had some business issues and, and they had to sell liquidate pretty much and, and they moved to Niles, Michigan. Unfortunately, shortly afterwards he died and so the family then moved to Racine. He being one of the younger of nine kids, um, a lot of the older kids, uh, kids if you wanna call them that, siblings had been um, involved in different parts of industry or education and so you know they got themselves established in different places. Um, he joined the through the Bell City Rifles during the Civil War and I'll tell you a little bit more about that a little bit later. His uh, first wife Mary, her family came from Cleveland, Ohio and they also settled in Racine. So prior to the Civil War they were sweethearts. So here we have William and Mary. Um, they moved here 1878. Um, initially, they lived above their company store and he had a lumber uh, factory or mill and furniture factory, um, everything lumber. And that was what brought them to Marshfield. Uh, Hub City is the, the nickname for Marshfield is because all these railroads converged together like a hub coming from Milwaukee, I call it the east coast of Wisconsin, the northern coast of Wisconsin, Superior, over to Minneapolis. There's a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So they looked around and saw nobody really tapped into the woods that were here. The only thing that was helping to move product out was railroads. Everybody else had rivers. So that's what they used was the railroads. Mm -hmm. Their business, the lumber yard, this is, there was a fire that happened in Marshville, which I'll tell you about. This is after the fire. So that is his industry, um, where the furniture factory is right now, in this picture right there, mm -hmm. that is where the wine vendor shoe factory now sits. Oh, so okay. everything that is of this complex was in that direction. Okay. So they had the house built in 1880. Um, by 1885, there's um, heat, electrical, um, steam heat is you know, from the radiators. Um, and then also, this was one of the first places to have a telephone um, in the city. Mm -hmm. 1887, he's the mayor of Marshfield, and unfortunately Marshfield burns down because of a fire that starts not in his factory, but because of a train going by his factory. Mm -hmm. And so the fire starts there, he loses everything. Um, oh. his, his lumber that was waiting to be cut is burned, everything, and it moves. The, the um, fire is kind of going in this direction, north and east, and then the winds shift, and it takes it down the business district of Marshfield, and all four blocks of the city are gone. This is where we are right now. Um, we're standing right here, um, which doesn't look like that. Mm -hmm. But this house is um, an, that's on the corner over there. Yep. Like that. Yes, mm -hmm. and this is kind of interesting too because you can see what the house looked like very beginning. So this is, it was not a porch, yeah. then it became a wraparound porch, mm -hmm. and then it became enclosed. Um, so after after the fire, um, Mr. Upham is pretty instrumental in who he is and the connections he has, you know, resources just come flooding in. And Mary's also very much involved in the relief effort. Um, but after the this point, um, in 1894, he's nominated to become Wisconsin's 18th governor. So he serves one two-year term, it was from 1895 to 1897 by which time his two girls, and they were adopted, they weren't actually natural children to William and Mary. They are getting married or have been married. So 
after they were done with the governorship, they moved back to this house and kids are gone. Um, he, he has a lot of stuff happening with his business that he has to do mop up with. Um, and then unfortunately in 1912, Mary passes away. Um, they've been married for well over 40 years and um, she'd been very loved in the community. Mr. Upham decides um, he's gonna take a yacht trip and he has a, a yacht built in De Pere and he's gonna go down the Mississippi, Gulf of Mexico, up the Eastern seaboard and then back to the St. Lawrence Seaway. But he actually runs into his second wife on that trip. Mm. A storm blows him into Beaufort, North Carolina and he meets Grace. Um, he's 72 on this trip, Grace is 29. So she's never been married. Um, looks like there's no prospect for anybody to marry. So their their budding romance is starting. He continues on his tour, you know, his, his cruise. They're writing back and forth, and I don't think the the daughters really know what's going on until he eventually says, "I met somebody, and I'm going to marry her." Kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, they are in their fifties by this point, and she's still <coughs> only thirty years old. Mm -hmm. So they do get married. They have two boys. When Mr. Upham has his first son, he's 75 years old. And then when Frederick, they called him Bill, um, Frederick or Fritz is born, Mr. Upham is, is 80 years old. He dies shortly after this picture in 1924. Grace remarries and um, together they have a little girl named Letty. This is her right here. Um, Harold Hambright is the man she married, and he actually had a son through a prior marriage. His first wife died from tuberculosis when the baby was still seven months old. So um, they live in the house here. He dies in 1944. She dies in 1975, at which point the house is then sold to the Historical Society. In 1925, Grace has a lot of renovations done. Mm -hmm. That's when that gets enclosed. Mm -hmm. There had been pocket doors in here that used to you know, close off and those are removed. We think probably about that time. Mm -hmm. And then these windows are put in about that time as well. Um, the reason we have Mr. Lincoln hanging here, <laughs> um, this lithograph belongs to Mr. Upham, and there was a connection between him and President Lincoln. Um, one of the first battles that William was in when he was in the Civil War was the first battle of Bull Run, and he was shot and left for dead on the battlefield. And his commanding officer sent a note back home saying, I'm pretty sure Will is dead. I was with him when he was shot and it didn't look good. So they had a funeral for him back in the scene. Shortly afterwards, they did hear that he's still alive. They're corresponding with him and then um, he paroles and is exchanged back to the North. And at the time, the Senator of Wisconsin, one of the senators was from Racine, so a hometown kid, you know, hey, let's do him a favor. He got him an appointment with President Lincoln. And I'm pretty sure he's probably a famous young man at this point because of the injury that he survived. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so Mr. Lincoln um, is pretty impressed with him. And he, at the end of the interview, he says, is there anything you know, you'd like me to do? And Mr. Upham said, I'd like to go to West Point Academy. So he appointed him to West Point as one of 11 appointees that he had during the war. This room was expanded in 1890. Originally the wall would have been here and then this was all added. Um, and the ceiling uh, was put in the 1920s. And if it weren't there, you would see that this side of the room was almost two feet lower than the original ceiling, which is as tall as in the library there. Okay. And um, probably in the 1920s when Grace did renovations is when this was put into camera. You know, just kind of get rid of the whole idea that my ceiling is crooked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, furniture in here is open manufactured. Pieces that are not would be the secretary behind you. Um, that piece and these two pieces here, but everything else uh, was either belonged to or was created by the open manufacturer. But at this point in time, we've just finished with our, our garment inventory. Mm -hmm. It has taken the whole pandemic year. Um, 
This is part of some of the things that came out of that collection. And these are the ones that we couldn't find the donor's name to. Mm -hmm. So they're found in collections pretty much. And so the next thing is to determine what happens with these. So these rooms um, originally would have been used by family members. Um, the Uppos had family living with them often. And um, actually when they moved to Marshfield, they had one of Mary's sisters and her nephew living with them. She remarried shortly after they got here. But I think in mind they were thinking, we have people living with us all the time. Let's create a space where they can feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what this, I believe this area might have been for. Mm -hmm. But in the course of time, it also became um, a toy room, a nursery, a bedroom, um, an ancillary bedroom, mm -hmm. and, and then a sitting room. When, when Grace passed away, it was another sitting room. Mm 